Hello there, so I've got a fairly short video for you today. I want to cover just four things about AT&T. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the DirecTV spin-off. The second thing I'm going to be talking about is the 5G auction and how that has all gone. The third thing I'll be speaking about is AT&T's debts and basically how the 5G auction and the DirecTV spin-off will affect the debt and where I see that debt going in the future. And then finally, I'll be talking about the share price and what values I see as being a good price to buy at. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Andy and on this channel I like to talk about money and success. If you're interested in making, saving or investing money, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell and then you'll get notified every time I release a new video. And if you enjoy this video and find it useful, please do remember to hit that thumbs up because it helps the YouTube algorithm, which in turn helps me and I do appreciate it. So without any further ado, let's just jump straight in. We're going to talk about Direct TV. So if you don't know already, Direct TV is something that AT&T acquired for frankly way too much money and have been trying to sell for a long time. There was a big write down. If you saw my previous video on AT&T, I spoke about that. I'll put a link up there to that and in the description down below to my previous video where I spoke in more depth about that particular write down and how that affected the Q4 results of 2020. So if you're interested in that, check that video out. I'm not going to go into that now, but the long and short of it is AT&T needed to get rid of DirecTV. So let's have a look at the slides and we'll talk about what they've actually done. So this is from their most recent slides. This is late February they made these slides in 2021. As you can see, they believe this move aligns with their strategic focus. They want to improve ability to focus on strategic growth priorities, which is a 5G wireless, Fiverr and HBO Max, which we know are great growth areas, provides future optionality, as in they still have the option to sell it, and commercial relationships remain in place, wireless broadband bundles, HBO Max, etc. Etc. Supports deliberate capital allocation plan. The new entity is positioned to maximize value creation, includes US Direct TV, AT&T TV, and UVerse video services. Strong relationship with TPG helps improve operational focus and flexibility. Independent and focused management team expect improved cash generation. So the deal highlights you can see at the top right there, 16.3 billion enterprise value, jointly governed, 30-70 common equity split. That's 70% to AT&T and 30% to TBG. Okay, so that's what the split's going to look like. Let's look a little bit deeper into the deal now. So the new entity will have a value of 16.3 billion, as you can see at the top there. TPG is contributing 1.8 billion from senior preferred equity and taking a 30% common equity stake. AT&T contributes the video business and receives 4.25 billion in junior preferred equity, 4.2 billion in common catch-up equity and 70% common equity. 6 billion in net debt financing by the new Direct TV venture, DTV as they called it. And AT&T continues to fund NFL Sunday ticket for 2021. That basically gives 6.8 billion in cash to AT&T at the deal close. So when the deal actually gets closed, AT&T walk away straight away with 7.6 billion in cash. And remember, they still own 70% of the company. So they've actually, if you work it out, they've got about 21 billion for it when you work it out that way, because they still own 70% of it and they've pulled out 7.6 billion as well as. So actually, this is a better deal than we were expecting if you'd seen my videos in late 2021. I'll put a link up there to my playlist of AT&T videos and I'll put a link to that in the description down below so you can watch all my previous AT&T videos. But actually this, I'm quite pleased with this, looks like they're doing better than I was expecting anyway. So the new DTV assumes 0.2 billion or 200 million of existing direct TV debt. So that's debt that will come off the AT&T balance sheet. But as I said at the beginning of this video, I will be going much more into the debt in a moment. So we're gonna talk about AT&T's debt in a moment. So AT&T financial expectations, they expect to apply 8 billion in cash proceeds in 2021 towards debt reduction. They do not expect material impact to 2021 financial guidance, meaning they expect that AT&T will still make the same amount of money as it was going to anyway, despite getting rid of DirecTV in this spin-off. After closing, AT&T expects to deconsolidate new DirecTV from consolidated financial results. Realigned business lays a foundation for improved future revenue and EBITDA production trajectory and they expect to close the deal in the second half of 2021. So the key points as I see it really are 8 billion is going to be allocated to paying down debt. So AT&T will be using 8 billion from this to pay down their debt. So in the second half of 2021, we can expect 8 billion to arrive on the balance sheet from this particular spin-off, if you like, for AT&T, and that can be used to pay off the debt, which we'll be talking about in a moment. I'm gonna go through more specifics on the debt. AT&T retains 70% equity, which means they will still be getting an income from DirecTV. 
Although if you've watched my previous videos or you know anything about this, you'll know that is a diminishing thing anyway. DirecTV has not been a great part of the business and 200 million is being taken off the balance sheet in debt from AT&T to DirecTV. So there's your key points. Now let's talk about the 5G Spectrum auction. So the 5G Spectrum auction reached 81 billion, which was far more than was actually originally expected. Verizon bid 45.45 billion and won 3,511 of the bands, or 61.77%, whilst AT&T bid 23.41 billion, making the second highest bidder, and won 1,621 bands, or 28.52%. So between AT&T and Verizon, they now own over 90% between them. Now, why is that good? That's good because between them, they can now basically block out all of the smaller players. But let's have a look just how the other players did. So there's the results. You can see the top five bidders according to the FCC Cell Co partnership, which is Verizon basically, 45 billion, AT&T, 23 billion, as you can see. But look at the next biggest one, T-Mobile, just 9 billion. United States Cellular, 1.2 billion and it just gets smaller from there. Top five bidders by number of licenses and look at the license difference. So you've got Verizon with 3,500, AT&T with 1,621 and then the next closest competitor is United States Cellular Corp with just 254. So between them, AT&T and Verizon really have dominated this, Verizon obviously being the really big winner, although they've spent substantially more money to achieve it. AT&T with the financial state that they were in couldn't really have afforded it anymore and we can expect this money to be added to their debt, which is what we're gonna talk about next. And I know it's something that a lot of people are concerned about with AT&T, so let's have a look at the slides for that. So now I'm gonna give you an update on the debt and my expectations with the debt. So 23.4 billion likely to be added to the balance sheet as long-term debt. That's from the Spectrum, the 5G Spectrum auction that we've just spoken about there. So we can realistically expect that to be added as debt onto AT&T's balance sheet. Now in July 2018, AT&T's debt level was 181 billion. That's the kind of the peak. And that was following the acquisition of Time Warner Media, which I think was a great acquisition. I think that's one aspect of the business that has a lot of potential for growth. Now T finished 2020 with a debt level of 153.78 billion. So you could see it had pulled it down somewhat. But once the 23.41 billion is added, we can expect that debt level to be 177.19 billion. Now, in late 2021, when the spin-off of DirecTV completes, we can expect 8 billion to be knocked off that to bring it down to 169.19 billion. In terms of repayments, 30 billion is due to be repaid by 2025. 60 billion has been refinanced at historically low rates. And we expect AT&T to have around 142.75 billion in debt at the start of 2026, if things continue as expected. So that's basically where I'm expecting it to go on the debt level. If you think that's not achievable, then that's fine. I mean, feel free to leave me any comments down below. That's no problem at all. But personally, I think this is achievable. We're talking about a company with a massive turnover and really strong free cash flow. So this is perfectly achievable. It needed to bid heavily in order to get the 5G network that it needed and essentially lock out the smaller competitors. And I think it's achieved that between Verizon and AT&T. They've they've pretty much sewn things up now. So really, I think they've done very well on that. And so we're happy with that outcome. So now let's just talk about the shares, I suppose, and the share prices. Since my last video, I have indeed invested and bought some more shares in AT&T. I actually bought in at $28.50 and bought 250 shares. I know you guys are interested in know these kind of things. And I will show you my current target levels now. So there's my target buy price, exactly the same as last time. I'm targeting good value at $28.50 per share, excellent value at $27.50 per share, and I'll be loading the boat if it gets to $26.50 per share. I'll be totally honest with you, I've for the last few days now, I've had uh, an order in at $27.50. It's just not reached that level. My $28.50 order did get triggered. With hindsight, it would have been nice to have an order in at $28 because that level did get touched on. So I could have bought them a little bit cheaper and I know some of you guys probably did. I got in at $28.50 and if it goes back down there again, I'll probably be buying more. If it gets $27.50, I'd definitely be buying more. And $26.50, I will definitely, definitely be buying more. I am still hoping that there is gonna be some kind of a market correction, but time will see. If you're interested in the forecast, I actually did that in my previous video, so you can check that one out in that. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful and bye-bye.